I'm going to show you how to add a save file into RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. There are three steps to the process. Finding the file, adding it to the RPCS3 folder system, and then unencrypting it using a program called Brute Force. Here's timestamps if you need them. In my example, I'm going to be installing a save file for Killzone 3 that has the campaign mode fully completed. That way I can have all the chapters unlocked. So the first thing I need to do is find the save file I need. I did a web search for Killzone 3 PS3 saves and immediately found one on GameFAQs. Other places to find saves include Apollo Saves Tool GitHub, Brewology, and a site called The Tech Game. And I'll put links to all these in the description. You can also copy a save file from a PS3 console onto a USB stick and then move that file into RPCS3 on your PC. Here's the PS3 menu path for getting the file onto a USB stick. When you come across save files on the internet, most of them state what region they are from. Normally, if you have a US version of a game, you want the save file to also be the US version. But luckily it's not an issue for us, because the brute force program I'm about to show you allows you to change the region of the save file. I downloaded the Killzone 3 file, extracted it, and then moved it into a temporary folder I named Killzone 3 Completed File. The save itself is a single folder and the name of that folder has the serial number and the name of the game in it. This is the typical naming structure for PS3 game saves. Do not change it. Inside that folder are five files including DAT and SFO files. Don't touch those as well. I'm now going to move the serial number folder and its contents into RPCS3. At the top of RPCS3, I'm going to click Manage, Save Data, then View Folder, which is on the bottom right. In the folder path that appears at the top, I'm going to click the word Save Data. So now I have the save data folder open, and this is where your game saves need to be stored. I'm then going to move that serial number folder into this save data folder. I'll say yes when it asks me if I want to replace the existing file. The save data is now in the correct spot within RPCS3, but the game isn't detecting it. I know because when I open the game, it's not showing that the campaign has been completed. It's acting like I've never played the game before. This is all because the save file is encrypted, so RPCS3 can't read it, unlike an actual PS3 can. It's also possible that the save file is just a bad file, but that wasn't the case here. By the way, sometimes on the internet, you may find save files that have already been unencrypted. If so, they should be labeled as such, and RPCS3 CS3 will be able to read them without doing this next step I'm about to show you. I don't see that many of them out there though. In order to unencrypt save files, you need to download a program and use it. I originally downloaded Apollo Save Tool into the RPCS3 emulator, but I could not get it to unencrypt the file. Later, someone on Discord told me that the program does not work well in RPCS3. It does apparently work fine when you download it on an actual PS3 console, so one could unencrypt the file on their PS3 and then move that over to their PC. But I wanted to keep the process all on my PC, so I'm going to use the program called Brute Force. Getting Brute Force up and running is a bit wonky, but once it's working, the process of unencrypting only takes a few seconds. Finding where to download the program is a challenge in itself. It doesn't seem to have a centralized location. There are download links to various versions of it scattered throughout the internet, but there's also comments on videos and message boards saying that certain versions don't work anymore. Regardless, I was able to get it to work, and here's exactly how I did it. Before downloading anything, I went to this message board, which I'll put a link to in the description, and in the first comment there is a link to version 4.4.2, which isn't the latest version, but like I said, I got it to work. I unzipped the RAR file, ran the installer, 
It went through the motions, but on the last dialog box, I told it to run the program, and it told me that it couldn't because of a missing DLL file. But luckily, the third person on that message board attached the missing DLL file. It's right there in their message. I downloaded that file, unzipped it. I then went to the brute force save data folder, which the installer created earlier. On my computer, it was installed by default to the program files x86 folder. If you can't find the folder, run the installer again and make note of the destination folder right here. I took the DLL file and pasted it into the brute force save data folder. I then ran the brute force save data executable file that was in the same folder. There were some pop-up messages and I bypassed all of them because I didn't know what most of them were talking about. I said no or clicked X or whatever and I got them all to go away. The next thing I did was change the folder path indicated here by clicking the three dots out to the right and then selecting the save data folder within the RPCS3 folder system. The same place I put the PS3 save data earlier. I pointed it directly to the PS3 save data folder. The folder appeared in the top window. I right clicked it and selected decrypt PFD. I said yes to this prompt. When I did that, it put a little bit of green at the bottom of the screen. I also want to point out that this program allows you to change the region of the save data. I did not need to do that since I already have a US save and the kill zone I have installed is the US version. But if I needed to do it, I can right click the file and select change title ID slash region. And then in this box here, I would replace the serial number that's appearing there with the serial number of the game I have installed in RPCS3. I would then click OK. I'm not sure if this needs to be done before doing the decrypting part, but I would say yes to be sure. Having done everything I need to do in brute force, I exited out of it. But before I closed, it asked me if I wanted to keep the file de-encrypted. I chose yes. Choosing no doesn't do anything. It keeps the program open. So the only way you're going to get out of it is to pick yes. I guess you could do a forced shutdown, but I wouldn't mess with that. I then booted up Killzone 3 and went into the campaign menu. And now I have the ability to select any chapter. So it's now reading my new save file. I hope you found this video helpful. I have other how-to videos for RPCS3, including ones on how to update games to their latest versions, and also how to play online games on private servers. See the links in the description. Have a great day everybody.